Josh Grant, of course, and then when you traded back up, that was really the boldest move by general manager ever since 1978 in bankruptcy. Thing. So it was historical here. Tell us what went into that. Uh, you said you'd been talking to the Cardinals about it back when before the trade. How did you pull that? <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a loaded question there, but I would say start with CJ. Um, really productive player. Uh, we had him in the building for a visit. Um, he's, I would say, as competitive a player. Um, has a, a, an edge about him in a good way. Loves football. Wants to compete. Wants to be great. Um, you know, good size. Comes from a good program. Um, you know, Ryan does a great job. You know, with the program down there at Ohio State, and you know, or up there at Ohio State. Um, certainly uh, with the quarterback as well. Um, you know, CJ has been a productive player. He's been an accurate player. Um, certainly has a long way to go. I think he'll admit that. Um, I would say there's no timetable on any player. So the goal is for the player, whoever they are, to come in here, work hard, earn their role on a team, whatever that entails. Um, but he's a player that our coaches spent a lot of time on, spent a lot of time with, had a lot of constructive discussions. Um, we felt that that was the best decision for us to make. And as far as the trade is concerned, you know, it's, it just really comes down to doing you know, what we feel is best for the football team. And it was an opportunity to get a player who, you know, we thought very highly of. Um, we knew that he wasn't going to last. Um, and we felt that adding him to our football team was something that, you know, we wanted to do. Um, can't say enough good things about Will, just the person that he is, the human being that he is, his leadership. And unsolicited, you know, before the draft, you know, we received just commentary about, you know, just the, the praise was just incredible. But it was, we've talked about this, whoever they are as, as players, they are as people as well. And when you see a consistent pattern of behavior um, and every step of the way, the messaging is the same, then it says a lot about who that individual is. So... You know, really, the trade in and of itself was just about doing what we felt was best for the team and the organization. Um, and I would say trades are always a product or a function of the player. And, you know, I would say just from our perspective, it's not about, like, what the points tell you on the chart. You know, if you have conviction about a player and you want a player and you think the trade is the right thing for you to do, then you go ahead and do it, you know, which is what we did. So I would say we're certainly not worried about, like, what the points are. And what the trade chart says, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything. So um, so the trade was really driven more by this is a player we thought would bring a lot of value to our team. So that's why we went ahead and did it. Go ahead, Christy. Yeah, I haven't been out of the building here in a little bit, but um, you know, it's hard to say that you've addressed a need when you know a player hasn't walked in the building. I think we've identified players that have the traits and characteristics that we think um, you know we want to have in our building, and it's not just about what they do on the field; it's about other qualities that they possess. Uh, I think it's what, one thing that's going to be important is for whoever we draft tonight and then the future days here is they have to earn the respect and the trust of their teammates, and they haven't really earned anything to this point, or they're certainly not entitled to anything. So I think we're excited about the opportunity that's in front of us. It doesn't mean really anything at this point. You know, we know that our opponents and uh, the teams in our division, they're going to add good players as well. So all we can do is focus on the Texans and what we're trying to do. So if the fans are excited, that's great. So I think they'll be more excited, you know, when we win games and, you know, we're a long way away from playing our first game there in September. Um, but I think this is about just repetitive action over the course of time and being consistent. And we're not going to solve anything in one draft, one player, one night. It's going to take a series of actions over time with the right people, with the right mindset that believe in the things that we're doing, that believe in what we're trying to build. And then hopefully that will manifest itself on the field when we actually do play.
Yeah, every, every year is different. Every draft's going to be different. You can't really project what's going to happen in 2024. So we talked about this before the draft. I think we put ourselves in a position. We created some optionality for ourselves. So if we felt there was an opportunity that we could take advantage of, then we were in a position to do it. And I would say the way kind of the chips fell, like that kind of happened to work itself out. And again, we haven't played a game yet. These players haven't been in the building. They haven't done anything to this point. Like they've been productive players in their respective programs, but the reality is they're starting over. So um, what we try to do is just create flexibility for ourselves, and you can accumulate as many draft picks as you like, how you utilize those draft picks. Ultimately, you have to take the information, process it, have constructive dialogue about it, and then kind of go through what-if scenarios. And if you make this move, here's what's going to cost. Are we comfortable with it? Do we have conviction behind the pick? Do we have conviction behind the player? Um, and I would say the staff involvement in that is a part of it. So it's player, um, how we feel the player is going to fit our program. What do they bring to the table? What do we have to give up in return? And we're either comfortable with that or not. And I think from an ownership perspective, the McNairs have certainly been supportive of what we're trying to do. I think the one thing that they, you know, enable our staffs to do is really do our jobs um, and give us the ability to try to make good decisions for the organization. So, um, you know, from that perspective, you know, we're certainly appreciative of that. I don't want to speak for D'Amico, but I, I know he feels the same way. Yeah, and it's not really specific to the quarterback position here. I and mean, really our responsibility and job is to know each position kind of top to bottom and know who the players are, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, what's the role that you potentially could envision for them. It doesn't really mean anything, though, until they actually get here. So, But having an overall understanding of the board top to bottom and then across positions, like that's our job, that's our responsibility when we scout and evaluate players. So, and I think we've we've done that along the way. Um, we've talked about this. I mean, Lip and the college staff do an unbelievable job. So, but that's what they're here to do. So, everybody has a job. Everybody has responsibility. You know, every player is important. Um, so, however many players we ended up with on the board, the final count, whatever that was. Like we're going to know those players, and you know, we're over the last week or so, we've talked about players that are not going to get drafted that we would want to add to our team. So it's not, well, let's focus on like these two players, these couple players in this position. We really focus on, let's call it however many players there are. It's probably 150 to 200 players, including some of the undrafted players. So our job is to know those players, what they bring to the table, what's the opportunity, when can we add them to the team. And then once they actually get here, then they're essentially starting over, and their progression is going to be based on how quickly they assimilate to our culture, what we're trying to do, and then a performance on the field will ultimately dictate who's going to play. Yeah, I mean, I think this process is always fluid, so you never get to, uh, well, the light bulb goes on, and okay, well, here it is. So it's constant discussion, constant dialogue, constant research, really all the way up until the draft. So, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what our job is. You don't really settle, okay, we have enough. Well, let's just go back and let's confirm. Here's what we think it is. We've accumulated maybe some additional information. Let's confirm it. What does it tell us? Is it consistent with what we've heard previously? All right, and then really you arrive at an endpoint and say, all right, we know any player. We know what the player is. We know what they're about. We're comfortable with it, right, wrong, or indifferent. Every player has strengths. Every player has weaknesses. You're essentially saying whatever they have that you're comfortable with when they walk in the building. So there's never an end point where you say, okay, all of a sudden, like, we're good. Like, you're really never good up until you pick the player. And then once you pick the player, then we kind of recalibrate. So now the next step is for them to come in the building, <laughs> rookie mini camps in a couple of weeks. We'll do some sports performance testing, kind of get a baseline of where they are from the strength, from their endurance, from their power. We'll see where they are on the field. We'll go out there for rookie mini camp. Probably won't do anything too substantive, but we'll get a workout. And then really they're going to go into phase two. So they're behind our players. So. It's constantly moving. There's never an end point. So, like, it's like, oh, what are you going to do when the draft's over? Well, we're going to flip the page, and then we're going to focus on phase two. We're going to focus on our players, and we're going to continue the team building aspect, like whatever that entails. So, 
Um, specific to CJ, I think I alluded to it in the opening. I'd say his toughness, um, his competitiveness, um, his leadership, um, his accuracy, like those are all strengths of his. Um, there's certainly things that he's going to have to work on. There's things that he's really probably never seen defensively, what some of the other teams are going to do. Um, he's going to have to learn our vernacular, our vocabulary of how we call plays, our offense, probably a lot different than what he did with Coach Day at Ohio State. It doesn't mean one's better or one's worse. It just means you're essentially starting over. So it's just like when you go from, you know, college or you go from high school to college, like you're essentially starting over. You know, when you take your, you know, intro finance class, it's probably a little bit different than, you know, whatever your econ class was in high school, if they even teach that. So everybody's starting over. But, you know, CJ has a lot of qualities that, you know, we like, and which is why we felt comfortable making the pick that we did. Yeah, so we made the pick with uh, with CJ there, and Arizona was on the clock, and then we were on the clock, and we were really going back and forth to on the trade compensation. So I'd say we, the trade itself was actually consummated with about a minute and a half left on the clock. So it's us to Arizona, okay, we have a deal, us to the league, okay, we're doing a trade with Arizona, here are the terms, here are the parameters, they have to match it up. Okay, you're good. You're on the clock. Be ready to submit the pick. So there's a lot happening in a short period of time. So we were under five minutes, and then we were really under two minutes. So we had to get the pick ready to submit um, on a computer. So as soon as we were on the clock, it was ready to go. Get the player on the phone. So, you know, we had dueling phones working there for a little bit. So, um, and then I'd say we probably made the pick with less than a minute left. So the clock didn't run out. So at least we were able to make the pick. Uh, we didn't really know. We thought, well, maybe there's a possibility. Um, our job and, you know, part of my responsibility is to explore every alternative and every option. So I would say throughout the course of day today, um, there were some exploratory discussions, not only with Arizona, but with some other folks. Well, we're at 12. Okay, if we're going to come up from 12, what would it take? All right, here's what it would take. All right, let's see how it goes. And that was really all the way up until. And then I think as soon as we, um, as soon as Arizona was on the clock, then I would say the pace of those dialogues and discussion picked up. Yeah, it doesn't change anything, like the expectation. And when they get here, D'Amico will spend time with both players. But I think their job, their responsibility is to come in with the right attitude, with the right mindset, understand that they're part of a team, understand that they now have a home, and understand that they have to earn the trust and the confidence of their teammates around them. So they have a lot of work to do. Um, I think they understand that. They think they just want to be a part of the team and want to be a part of the solution. So we're not going to use any labels. Um, we're not going to put any terms on anybody. We're not going to put any timetables on anybody because, quite frankly, it's not fair to the players. Um, it's not really responsible to the rest of the team. So the expectation for the players that are in our building is the same. D'Amico is going to lay out the expectations about what he expects. And then the job of the player, in turn, is to respond and to be a good teammate, to do the right thing, put the team first, focus on your job, focus on improvement, focus on getting better, focus on taking advantage of your opportunity, whatever those are. And that's going to be the expectation, whoever is in this building, you know, between now and the start of the season in September. So that's where the focus is. It's not on any, you know, vernacular or about, you know, what their future is or their role in the organization. Quite frankly, they haven't earned it yet, and they have to earn that when they when they get here. Yeah, I mean, I'd say this process is really just about work. It's about constant, consistent work, and it's not about creating any sort of expectation. I mean, every draft is different. Every, you know, player is different, and this is part of our job and responsibility. So I think a lot of people put a lot of time, a lot of effort into this, um, and it's just one draft. Um, you know, there's going to be future drafts ahead of us. So 
I think our job is to, as best we can, continually over the course of time, just add good players that are good people that are going to do the right thing in the organization. So, um, you know, you're never going to rest on your laurels. There's never really you know, <laughs> any validation. It's not about that. It's just about, I think, those of us that are fortunate to be in the positions that we're in enjoy what we do um, and understand it's a process. Um, and, you know, you just have to find ways to continually improve and just try to make good, sound decisions over the course of time. And, you know, if something doesn't go the way you expect or it doesn't work out, okay, why didn't it work? What happened? You know, let's try to mitigate the risk. Let's try to mitigate the downside. And there's really no guarantee. Um, it's funny, I was listening to a podcast a few weeks ago um, about two uh, professors. They had done a, a research paper about the draft and just the probabilities and some different things. And, and I've even said this, and I know everybody looks at me like I have 10 heads when I say this, but, I mean, the draft is a 50-50 proposition. I mean, it's a coin flip. I mean, it's just reality. So there's nobody that's any smarter or, you know, in my case, pro I am probably dumber. But, you know, it's there's a lot of risk, and you're not really sure how it's going to go. So you try to take the information. You try to process. You try to make good, sound, smart decisions. And you hopefully that it manifests itself in positive results. So really not going to know the answers to that here for a little bit. Um, but, you know, I think we've positioned ourselves decently. So, you know, we, it's all about taking advantage of our opportunities, and that's the only thing that we can do, and the only thing we can control is our performance. You know, organ everybody within the organization, the only thing they control is their performance on a day-to-day -day basis and do it consistently, do it to the best of your ability, and that's all we could ever ask. Then when the deal was done, the clap was twice as loud. What what was it like inside that draft room? I know you need to stay even keel, but what was the emotion? Yeah, it's pretty subdued, quite frankly. So you just kind of move from – it's very <laughs> transactional, unfortunately. But it's very transactional. You go from one transaction to the next transaction. So I have a transaction at two. All right, now we have a transaction at three. So until I would say there was some emotional outburst probably at the end, when we actually consummated the trade, you know, there's natural excitement. And, look, people should be excited. I mean, I'd say people put a lot of time and a lot of effort, a lot of work into this. And when you see something come to fruition, you know, you should have some emotion. You know, like, you know, I get emotional as well. I know it doesn't appear that way. But, you know, but I think you also have to be realistic about, you know, where you are. So it's exciting. I think, you know. I'm probably better off not being at the draft party, and but we have a job to do. So I know not to take the excitement out of it. Like we should be excited, um, we should be appreciative about the opportunity. But it's really it's one transaction to the next. So it was you got to flip the page, and you can't get too high or low. Um, and then I think once we got to the end, I think you know there's certainly some natural excitement, probably because you know we knew they wouldn't have to stick around too late because we weren't picking the rest of the night. So. <laughs> Pardon me? Were you showing teeth? Uh, I don't know. We'll see when the video comes out if I was showing <laughs> teeth or not. So. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we're adding good players. I just think that, like, who they are as people is certainly um, significant. Um, you know, their stories, which everybody will have an opportunity to kind of see their story and kind of what they're about and their roots. Um, I would say, you know, CJ's mom's influence in his life is significant. Um, you know, hopefully I have an opportunity to meet her tomorrow. But we're all a product of our upbringing and the people that are around us. So I think for them, you know, this is validation of all the work and, and the time and the effort that those people poured into them. At some point, somebody is poured into us. Somebody's poured into you over the course of our life. So, and this is a momentous occasion, I would say, for the player and the individual because it's their dream becoming a reality. It's what they've worked their whole life for. So, now that the reality is here, now the reality is it's about work. So, I think both players have a certain amount of pride, um, a certain amount of mental and physical toughness, which to play in this league, you need to possess those. Um, so, Hopefully they're excited about the opportunity in front of them. They're excited about the work that they are going to have to put in. Um, and I'd say both players aren't afraid to hold other players accountable 
They've shown the propensity to do that with their respective programs. Now, whether or not they're actually going to do that here at a rookie season, you know, but I'd say leadership is more about your actions than your words anyways. So if you put in the effort, you put in the time, you put in purposeful work, your teammates see that, that's how you earn the respect of your teammates. So, um, you know, Will and CJ should be excited. They've earned this opportunity. Um, I think they're excited about coming to Houston. I think they're excited about playing for the organization. I think they're excited about playing for D'Amico and the coaching staff, um, you know, which is good. So, um, but in the end, it's about work. Um, now, it's this is their job. This is their life. So they're only get as, going to get as much out of it as much as they put into it. Yeah, well, we'll see exactly what that looks like. I mean, it's going to be, you know, new system, a new offense. So I think, you know, job of the staff, and I think, you know, on San Francisco, they show the ability that kind of, you know, you build an offense around your players. It's not the other way around. So, you know, and the players, what do they do well? How do we put them in a position to do the things that they do well? So, you know, not just the quarterback position. So CJ has... You know, a lot of good traits that go along with playing that position. So how that fits with what we're doing offensively. So there's probably going to be some things that, you know, are easier to do than others for you know, for him. Like what's the fit and how's it going to look? We'll see. We'll find out. That's part of learning. It's part of growing. It's part of adapting. It's part of adjusting. I mean, that's what the NFL is about. So there'll be things that he's going to probably be asked to do that he hasn't done before. Maybe there's some things mechanically that he hasn't done that we're going to coach, you know, out of him or coach him on. So – but that's part of being a pro. That's part of you know learning your craft and just trying to figure out, okay, what do they want me to do? Okay, how does that feel? How does that fit? And then just from a coaching standpoint, to put the players in the best position and try to accentuate their strengths. Same thing with Will. Like Will's going to be playing in a different system than he played in in Alabama. Like our defense is different than Nick's defense. So, okay, now we're in our defense. So, okay, how is that going to translate over? So we'll find out. So. There's an ebb and flow of this a little bit, and it's going to take time. So, you know, we have, you know, what's April, whatever today is. So May, June, we'll get, you know, six to eight weeks of work, and then take a little bit of break, and then we'll come back for training camp. And training camp is we're going to build a foundation, and then we're going to really get a better evaluation of, you know, where the players are, and then we'll see who's most ready to play, you know, come September, whatever, whoever the opponent is. Yeah, no, it's a good question. We've actually looked at that and kind of we know where we're positioned. So we have 65 and 73, and then the two fours, the fifth, you know, three six, the two seven. So we have a little bit of flexibility. And we'll, we'll do tonight, we'll go back to kind of see what's left, understanding there's probably going to be another 30 ish, 35 players that are probably selected before we pick. Could we move from 65 into the second round? You know, there's a possibility, but that's going to be player driven. So I think we've identified some players that we like. We also understand we're going to lose players. That's the reality of it. So we're going to lose players along the way. But I think in that general range, kind of how we have the players graded relative to their value and potentially what their role could be, you know, we think there'll be an opportunity to add some players to our team that, you know, we're, you know, we'll be happy to have in the building. Yeah, just to the initial part of the question, like I've never uttered that f phrase or used that terminology about our program. I think, you know, we're just trying to build a program and just trying to put as competitive a team out there as we can. So what a player can do, ultimately it's going to be up to their performance. And, you know, we're not going to put any labels. We're not going to put any timetables on anybody, any particular position, any particular player. So we'll do what we feel is in the best interest of the team. D'Amico will make the decisions and the coaching staff will make the decisions that we feel are best for the team. We'll put the best players out there that are ready to play and that are prepared to take advantage of the opportunity. So as far as kind of, you know, to Omar's question, you know, we're really not about labels, really not about terminology around here. We're about consistent, purposeful work, trying to build a program that's sustainable over the course of time. So wherever we get to that point with whatever those players, whoever those players are, ultimately that's what, you know, that's what our intention um, and our goal is going to be.
All right. Thank you. Thank you.